hi campers, this is Darren with My RV Works, and today what I want to talk to you about is refrigerators, specifically Dometic refrigerators, but this will apply to any. Um, but specifically, it's the absorption refrigerator. Uh, if, if your RV has a residential refrigerator, then you could watch this just for amusement. But what we're really focusing on today is the absorption refrigerator, which we find in, in RVs. These are the refrigerators that have the ability to run on LP gas or electricity. Some of you might even have a refrigerator that is called a three-way, which, which can work on DC, uh, DC heating element. And if you do have those, you're only going to use that when you're traveling between two places. You would never use a DC when you're camped out. So. What I want to cover on this video is your cooling performance and how to diagnose or troubleshoot your cooling unit. Now the cooling unit is the back part of the refrigerator. Uh, you have the insulated box with the door, that's the part that you see. But there's a whole other world on these refrigerators and that's behind these vents that we see behind me here. Um, if you think of a refrigerator more as a heating appliance than as, than as a cooling appliance, it's going to help make sense on some of the things that we're going to be talking about. I know that for me, when I'm working on these things, I, I, I become the refrigerator and I visualize the heat. Okay, So if you're having issues with your refrigerator, the absorption refrigerator, right? the first thing I want you to do is I want you to use your senses. I want you to use your smell, your, your, your sight and I want you to use your, your hearing, okay? So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to use your, 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 your sight. We'll start with sight, okay? Do you see a yellow residue uh, down at the bottom of the boiler? The boiler is, in this instance, I'm gonna bring you closer here in a second, but let's just have a little general discussion and then I'll bring you in in more specifics and I'll pinpoint some things. The boiler is a part of the refrigerator that's gonna get really hot. Um, most of the time they're on the, on the right side, but depending on your configuration, it might be on the left different um, model numbers have them in different places, but it's a boiler. You're going to look at it. It's like a chimney looking thing going up. Um, at the very base of that, do you see a yellow powdery residue? If you do, that would be a sodium chromate ammonia mixture. Now that'll dissolve in water, so it's easy to clean up because it's going to dissolve in water. But if you see that residue, you got a failed cooling unit. That, stop doing all your diagnosis. There's a breach in the cooling unit. The cooling unit, let me mention that for a second, the cooling unit is a, um, it's a totally sealed under pressure vessel and it's got four elements in it, ammonia, water, hydrogen and sodium chromate. The sodium chromate is an anti-rust inhibitor so we can kind of forget about him because he's not going to, he's not involved in the physics of how these things work. But the water, the ammonia and the hydrogen, they do work very interactively together, then you have to have heat and gravity. It's a gravity system. So knowing that there are these elements in there and that there's a pressurized system and it uses heat and gravity, if you see that yellow residue, that means there was a breach that some of those elements worked its way out of the, the pressurized vessel. It's not pressurized anymore. So yellow residue, it's your cooling unit. If you smell an ammonia, strong ammonia smell, either inside or outside here, that's another indication that you have a failed cooling unit. It's got a breach. That ammonia that's inside, very strong. Um, there's a so if, if if you smell the ammonia or the see the yellow residue, you got a breach. That's your your sight and your smell. If you hear a gurgling sound coming from um, the boiler, uh, I'm sorry, coming from the cooling unit. If you hear this gurgling sound, like a hiss, uh, another indication that you've got a breach in your cooling unit. Okay. So if you have either of those things, um, you see the yellow, you smell the ammonia, or you hear the gurgling, full stop failed cooling in it, you could, you don't have to troubleshoot any farther. But let's say that you pass those three tests, that your sight, your hearing, and your smelling all pass, there's nothing wrong with it. You're pretty convinced that the integrity of the cooling unit is intact. The next thing we need to look at is the leveling of the refrigerator. Leveling is very, very important because it is a gravity-fed system. As the uh, heat works its way up and it needs to have gravity coming down. If you've ever looked in the back of, if you take the vent off and you look in the back, there's like a three degree angle that is, is all they give you of off levelness. So when you're leveling your coach, you really need to make sure that your RV is in fact level. Um, not only does it make the doors open and close properly, but it really is very critically important for your refrigerator to work to work at all. Okay, so leveling is very important. The other thing is your heat source. We talked about it being uh, the three, the, the four elements, pressure and gravity, but your heat source. Your heat has to be correct. Um, now, when you're diagnosing your refrigerator, what we like is to start on the AC side only. There's just too many things that 
it could be if you try to troubleshoot your refrigerator on the LP side. So if we're gonna troubleshoot the cooling performance of our refrigerator, let's go with the AC side only, and that'll eliminate a lot of questionable things of propane too much, propane too little, pressure, and all this kind of stuff. So when troubleshooting, we're gonna troubleshoot on the AC side only but we need to have an adequate amount of heat. Um, so we need to make sure that our heating element is a correct wattage. Um, and so let me just mention that. And also that we have proper insula insulation of our refrigerator. So when I talk about that, then that gets into the, the next thing of ventilation. If it is a heating appliance, we have to get outside ambient air into the bottom, that's why it's louvered and vented, brought inside like a chimney. It's got to scrub the heat off of the cooling unit coils in the back, the absorber coil, the condenser fin up at the top. It's got to scrub the heat off and then vacate out of either the top of the RV, if your RV is, if your refrigerator is not in a slide room, or if your RV is, if, if, if your refrigerator is in a slide room, then it needs to come in, go up, make a right hand turn, exit stage left, um, or right, whatever. <laughs> So, and we're gonna get into all those topics when we're talking about this. Ventilation is very important for this. So as creating a chimney, you don't wanna have any heat breaches because you'll have uh, areas of uh, pockets of, of heat where it, it, it can not have that perfect good flow. If you cannot scrub the heat off the back of your cooling unit, you're never gonna absorb the heat inside your refrigerator and you're never gonna have cold food and frozen food, okay? So let's say that we've passed our smell, we've passed our sight, we've passed our hearing. Let's say that our RV is level. Let's say that our refrigerator is level. Let's say that we know that our ventilation is good and we're gonna talk about ventilation in just a second. Um, that'll probably be the, the next thing I'm gonna discuss more in depth. And um, but we've talked about our heating, we've talked about uh, the ventilation. So once you're convinced that those things are correct, um, then we need to start looking at some components. Okay, now, I mentioned ventilation. What I mean by that is we need to create a chimney. So when your refrigerator is, is in its place, inserted into the wall, in, into its hole, uh, there should be absolutely zero air flowing from the outside to the inside of your coach for several reasons. Um, there could be combustion back here, and you don't want that combustion to work itself inside the RV. You'll also find this on your um, furnace and on your water heater. Uh, all of these appliances need to be totally separate from the living space to the outside. So um, on this refrigerator, we want zero clearance between the walls, the side of the refrigerator, zero clearance between the, the side of the refrigerator and the wall. If there's a gap, fill it in with insulation, okay? On both sides. On the top, zero clearance on the top. That's really bad if you have the air coming up and it's got this little swirly thing going up on the top. Uh, if your refrigerator is in a slide room, they do have some baffle kits that we're gonna be discussing that are going to come through the condenser fin. We're gonna get into that in just a few minutes and they're gonna force the air to go through. We're gonna talk about how those baffles must work if your refrigerator is in a slide room. Most of the problems I've seen on refrigerator cooling performance issues is on refrigerators and slide rooms and we're gonna get into why in just a few minutes. Um, so we've talked about zero clearance on the sides, zero clearance on the top. You need a baffle if your refrigerator's in a slide room. Well, what about the back wall? We want less than a one inch clearance from the back of your fins, uh, the back of your absorbable coil and the whole side, less than one inch from the back of the cooling unit to the back wall of the refrigerator. If it's greater than a one inch, air has a tendency to be kind of lazy and it's gonna take the path of least resistance and it's gonna come in the bottom fin and just zip right on past everything, never scrubbing the heat off and therefore you're gonna have cooling performance issues. Um, so that's your ventilation problem. So you need to verify that zero on the sides, zero on the top. If you're in a slide room, a baffle, we're gonna talk about that in a second for those of you with refrigerators and slide rooms and no more than a one inch gap on the back. If you don't have that kind of a install, install, installation, <laughs> insulation, installation. If you don't have that spec, that could be the whole problem right there. There could be nothing wrong with your components. Your refrigerator could be perfectly fine. It's just not installed correctly, okay? So let's say now we've done all of our things. It smells right. Everything's good. We're rocking and rolling. Or we, we've confirmed, Darren, you have, I, I'm con you've convinced me that you're, it's installed properly, okay? and you're really, really suspicious that there's something wrong with the component. Okay, if you're at that point, then the, then the very next step after you've confirmed all the things we've just discussed is to do what's called the bypass mode. The bypass mode is where you're gonna to wanna to run your refrigerator for six to eight hours in full on mode. 
So the way you're going to do full bypass mode is you're going to unplug your thermistor. What's a thermistor? We're going to get into that later too. <laughs> All these things, look at what you have to look forward to. So the thermistor is a thing inside your food compartment. It's going to be attached to the fins inside your food compartment. Depending on the refrigerator model you have will determine if the thermistor is on the left, the right, or in the center, and how many fins over it is. Uh, where do you find out this information? Well, in the manual for the refrigerator. Um, if you're having a hard time finding the manual for a refrigerator, one resource that I can recommend is on our website, myrvworks.com. We have a resource tab. Click on the resource tab and navigate down. You're going to see a service manual library. And I don't have all the manuals, but I do collect a lot of manuals. And you could click and you could filter for Dometic. You could filter for your air conditioner, air conditioner, refrigerator. You could do air conditioners too. We have them there. And um, pull up the service manual or the spec sheet, parts manuals, things like that for your particular refrigerator. Like I said, I don't have them all, but the ones that I've come across over the years, I've been collecting them and I just decided to throw them up there and share them with you people. Um, so once you have your manual, you can determine your thermistor. Um, the thermistor is a resistor that changes resistance based on temperature. Okay, so as the temperature inside your food compartment increases and decreases, that thermistor is sending a ohms value resistance to the control board, telling the control board, hey, I'm too warm, I'm too cold, and I need to start the boiler or stop the boiler, these types of things. That is how the control board knows what it's, if it's having any effect, is through that thermistor. So by unplugging the thermistor, the control board is going to go into full auto mode. He thinks it's always too warm. Depending on your refrigerator model number will determine if you need to just unplug your thermistor or if you need to unplug your thermistor and, and they have a kit that you can plug it on the outside. But um, some of your refrigerators won't work if the, if the thermistor is unplugged. But the point is to unplug the thermistor or get it off the fins so it's reading more of an ambient air temperature. Okay, You need to let that run for six to eight hours. After six to eight hours in bypass mode, now we can start to play around with some of the, the, the other parts of it, the, the heating element, uh, different uh, ventilations and things like that. So with that, uh, let me bring you in a little bit closer and start pointing out some of the things that we've discussed, okay? Now what I'm going to do now is bring you in closer. I've got a light in here to kind of illuminate a little bit more of what we're looking at. Um, over here we have the control board. A couple different styles of control boards. Uh, this one has an, a, a separate igniter on it. So if you're working on your, D, on your LP side, this igniter will come into play. I'll do another video on how to diagnose this part. If we look up here, we have our electric heating element. Now, this right here is an important feature. Um, if this boiler gets too hot, this trips itself, so you'll need to reset this push button. Um, that would be an indication that your whole control board would not work because the 12 volts that's feeding the control board passes through this. Also, down back in the back back there, uh, we do have a, a high limit fuse uh, that, that will, will trip. So again, follow the 12 volts because this fuse back here is fed. First, it comes through here, goes through this um, high limit thermostat and then it feeds the board. So those are two little things you got to watch out for. The high limit fuse back here, the temperature fuse, and the high limit thermostat. Okay. So what we have here on the side, I wanted to show you this has got a zero clearance on the side, on this side, and if we pan over to this side, it's got a zero clearance on this side. So it's passed those two tests. Okay. And if we pan up to the top, We'll notice that this manufacturer put a, a, a baffle, if you will. So air is coming up, it's hitting this baffle, and it's being forced to go through the absorber coils right here. Uh, if this baffle was not here, then the air would be drawn in, and I would have like a foot distance between the back wall and the absorber coil. And we know that air is lazy, it's just going to take this path right here because it's a path of least resistance, and it's going to vent up to the top. Uh, never going through the absorber coil, therefore we're never going to scrub the heat off the absorber coil, therefore we're never going to have a cool refrigerator okay um, now while we're back here we look at our drip hose um, right here uh, I like to put a little bit of a P trap in it to collect the condensate and um, uh, you don't have to some people do some people don't I just think it makes a lot of sense and then make sure that you have this little insect cap on the back or you might possibly you might even get critters in your refrigerator um, the reason I do this little drip tray is because if I blow into this this the other end of this drip tray actually goes to the uh, I'm sorry the, the other end of this hose actually goes to the 
the drip tray inside your refrigerator. And if there's no low spot, no P-trap, if you will, it's very possible that that will collect, uh, uh, that any humidity or any more, um, warm air or whatever that's outside can actually work its way inside of the refrigerator. It's kind of like a, an air breach, if you will. So by putting a P-trap in there, I get a low spot, holds water, and um, it just makes sense to me. So I wanted to show you on the back of this. Now here we have your absorber vessel, your absorbable uh, coils here. Uh, these are kind of warm because I've had the refrigerator running for a little bit. Uh, another thing you can do is if your refrigerator's been running for a while, feel if these tubes are warm back here. Uh, these tubes should be warm, okay? If we've got 360 degree temperature boiler on this side and it's working correctly and it's working itself around, these should get pretty warm. Now these are warm, so therefore I have a properly functioning refrigerator, okay? Uh, if it's not functioning, then we might get them to be a little cool and that would indicate that uh, I don't have good circulation. Now, what I wanna do now is I wanna talk about the baffle kit that would be on the top that you might find on a slide out refrigerator. Okay, so your refrigerator is either going to be in a slide room or it's not gonna be in a slide room. So let's take the instance where it's not in a slide room. So what I've done is I've put up a, um, um, a grease board here and I'm gonna draw a, a quick drawing. If it's not in a slide room, then, and if this is the body of your RV, and let's just put your refrigerator right there, okay? Uh, here's the wheels and all this kind of stuff. We have an opening. So that would be what we have in this refrigerator with us right now. So. Cool air is drawn in, outside air is drawn in here, and, it, and it, it goes through this chimney. This is the chimney I'm talking about. And it's very important that we create this chimney. And on the top, right here, is where we, you know, you, you've seen these RVs that have those little vents on the top of them. Okay, now on the back of the refrigerator is the condenser fin here at the top. If I don't create a baffle, I'm gonna use red for a baffle. If I don't create a baffle right here to force the air through the condenser fin, then I'm gonna have issues. I'm never gonna get cooling because the air is gonna come around this way and I'm never gonna scrub the heat off of that condenser fin, okay? So that's why we must have the air go through that condenser fin, okay? Um, now in this refrigerator, which we looked at, which color is my baffle? We saw that they had put a baffle in right here um, because we have, let me go back to black, on the refrigerator, the absorber coil is this curly Q thing right there. Oh, dropping pins. Wait, I'm dropping baffles because <laughs> it was a red pin. So we need the air to come in, scrub the heat, and go out the top. That is if your refrigerator is not in a slide room. Now let's talk about the really challenging situation when your refrigerator is in a slide room because those are where it really most of the service calls I go on are for refrigerator performance issues for refrigerators that are in slide rooms. So let's see here. Let's visualize. Okay, so here is going to be my slide room. There's going to be the main body of the RV. Uh, my refrigerator is going to be right here. About right there. Okay, and then I'm going to have an upper vent and a lower vent. Right? Isn't this about what you have on your RV right there? An upper vent and a lower vent? So here's my lower vent, and here is my upper vent. Now, we were talking about air coming in. Um, air is going to come in, and it's going to do that. With me? Okay, that's what we want it to do. But we need that air to do work. So let me get rid of my blue lines because I need to develop this a little bit better. If you capture this idea, you'll become an expert on refrigerators. Now, let's put a couple little components in here. Here at the top of the refrigerator, I have my fins. Now the fins are, you know, uh, I'm trying to do three dimensions here. I'll tell you what, I'm not gonna do three dimensions because that's just gonna mess up my drawing. Um, but on the top of the refrigerator, there is a condenser fin. If you look in from the top or if you look in from the bottom, if you can, you'll see this. Uh, well, no, if you have a slide room, we'll just take off this fin right here. I'll tell you, let me clean that up. Bear with me just for a second. I'm not going to do three dimensions because that's just going to make it crazy. Um, let me put my slide room back together. There we go. Okay. What we have at the bottom is the absorber vessel, and we have the absorber little roller coaster thing. Okay. It goes into the refrigerator here. This is going to be the fins that are in your refrigerator food compartment. Here is a divider between your fresh fruit and your freezer. In the freezer, you have this thing we call in the trades called the cat box, which is about three inch thick solid foam and it's got all these uh, tubes that go in it 
on the other side of my drawing is a boiler and the boiler leaves and goes through these fins right here. I'll draw them like that. And uh, it leaves the fins and what we've created is a distillery. We're trying to get the ammonia out of the water and the ammonia is gonna have a liquid component and a vapor component. It's the vapor component that we want to go in the cat box because that's where it meets up with hydrogen. And back in the 1800s, I guess somebody liked cold beer and they figured out that, hey, if you take a vapor, ammonia vapor and hydrogen, you get a minus 128 degree reaction, yee So what we're having here is that the, as that hydrogen, as the ammonia comes in and wets those coils and the hydrogen meets up with it, rapid expansion or, or rapid evaporation. And when you have evaporation, you have rapid cooling. So it gets to minus 120 to minus 22 on these coils here. And by the time it gets down to the refrigerator fins, it might be 20 or, or so, okay? A uh, lot of variables, but just conceptually, that's what's going on here. So in order for this whole thing to happen, so it absorbs the heat and it works itself through here. This is where the hydrogen falls out of solution and the ammonia gets drawn back into the water. So you can go online and look at all these drawings. They're really great. Um, maybe, maybe possibly better than mine. So what I wanna talk about is a baffling. Somebody use red for baffling. If I, before I put a baffling in, let me go with blue. If I do not put a baffle in here, and here comes the air in this, it's just gonna take this shortcut right here, and it's gonna go out. It hasn't done anything. You're gonna have performance issues with your refrigerator. So let's get, it, get, let's get rid of blue here, okay? And let's force blue to do some work for us. So I'm gonna use red for baffling. Let's force the baffling. Remember how we said less than a one inch gap? I wanna develop this top part a little bit better. Um, in fact, what I'm gonna do on this, I'm gonna take this right here and I'm gonna develop it right there, okay? So here's the top of my refrigerator, okay? And and here's the side wall. I could do a little bit better than that. Here's the side wall, the, the upper vent of my slide room, okay? So you with me on here? I've taken this little drawing and I've made it bigger, okay? Uh, so here would be my fins at the top, okay, my condenser fins at the top. Now, let me go back to blue. Here comes blue air. If I don't put any kind of a baffle, blue air is gonna come up and go right out and we've just wasted everybody's time. You're never gonna have an efficient refrigerator. So let's get rid of blue. Now I'm gonna use red for my baffle. Here's red. What we need to do is take this baffle and go up about a quarter of an inch to the touching the fins and we're gonna come down and make sure that we're gonna force the air to the fins. Now there's another part of the baffle and there's a baffle kit. I don't know the part number offhand, but it, it's gonna force it to curl right there and connect to the top of the vent. So now what we've done, that's the how you must have it done. Air is gonna come in here. Oh, I have to go through here. I have to do work. I'm gonna go through my fins and then I'm gonna come out. Thereby, we're scrubbing the heat off of the condenser fin and I don't have I'll use green for bad air. I don't have all this air getting caught up on top and just really making a big mess of things. I want nice air to go through my fins. So does that make sense? Good. Now let's talk about fans. So in, in, in summary, I need a baffle to force my air to go through a chimney. So what I was developing down here is, is this kind of a concept. Okay, so there you go. I need my air to be drawn in through here, scrubbing heat, scrubbing heat, scrubbing heat, through the chimney, scrubbing heat, and then go out that way. Now, when it's in a slide room, we need to help it. We need to put fans in. So let's show you where the fans go, okay? Make sense? How colorful is that? All right, let me draw fans, and then we'll pretty much move on to the next topic. Um, okay, so we've just done the side view. Now to get the air, now I'm gonna do a back view of a refrigerator. Here is the back view of a refrigerator. Here we have the condenser fin that I just drew. It has the fins. This is the, the fins that the air has to go through. And then while we're at it, I'll just take red and just, it needs to have that little baffle to have it curl out, okay? And then the baffle to have it touch. The baffle, you want it to touch this. You don't want the air to take a shortcut. That's kind of important. Um, and then we're gonna go with black again. And then this is where we have our little Yeehaw! It looks like something you want to drive around in. And then they have this little tube that comes down here. Here's your boiler on this side. And water seeks its own level. We'll use, I don't know, I'm using blue for air. I'll use green for water. So, because it's got ammonia in it. So water is in this vessel right here. 
And let's see, da, 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 water seeks its own level. So it's going to go through here. All this is full of water and it's going to seek its own level. And that's where, and I'm running out of colors here. That's where our heating element is going to go. The heating element and the burner, if you're doing the LP, the burners down in here, you want the heating element and the burner in this liquidy part, okay? In my instance, green, uh, to create the bubbling thing. So that's why the heating element is below the water line, all right? That doesn't have anything to do with fans, but um, what color am I using? Fans, okay. Um, what color do you want to use for fans? I'll use blue for fans. Your fans, I've, I've seen fans up here. They don't go up there. I've seen fans down here. They don't go down there. Fans go right in the center, right in this area right in here. So you might have two fans right here. If your refrigerator is in a slide room, you must have fans. And the thermostat is typically mounted right here on the side. So you've got, you're picking to pick up your 12 volt down here. You're gonna go up here to this thermostat. And when the thermostat gets to 130 degrees, in other words, when this fin right here gets to 130 degrees, it's gonna turn these fans on. And when the fin drops to 105 degrees, it's gonna turn the fans off. And so remember, I'm running out of colors, so I'll use black. So this is the opening. I should have used a different color. This is the opening, this opening right here on the bottom, okay? And then you have, I'll stay with black, I'm gonna mess up my drawing, but then you have another opening right here, okay? On the top, and we wanna block this part off right here to not let the air go. No, 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 no air. We wanna force it to go through these uh, condenser fins at the top but air's not gonna, it's gonna look at this and it's gonna say, I'm not going in there, that's too much work. So that's what we need the fans for. Your fans must be working. Uh, there is a third fan kit you can get and it mounts on this absorber coil down here. And so you can have up to three fans. Um, if your fans stop working and you're in a bind and you really need to get home, you can get a fan, And but I would want you to put it up, you know, you get a fan. You really want the fan to be up in this area. I, I'm just saying like, if this was my thing, I would put a fan, I'd try to put a fan in here, but whatever you do, don't blow the fan on the boiler because you're kidding yourself. The boiler needs to get to temperature and you're trying to cool it off. So make your fan above the boiler. And the goal is to get the, the, the heat drawn in and forced through to make that right hand turn. Okay, so I hope all of that makes sense. If not, shoot me some questions and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Um, I know more than I can draw. So uh, what's exciting is to go to Dometic and Elkhart and tour their factory and sell the robots making these things. That's really cool. Um, so let's see where we're gonna go with this next. Let me look at my notes because I actually did have notes. Um, here's my notes. So I'm gonna move you back out and we're gonna finish up talking about a few more things and we're gonna talk about thermistors still and um, wiring communications and the heating element, okay? Now that we've covered the importance of ventilation, I didn't wanna minimize that, that step because you're like, oh, Darren, it's just a little insulation on the side. Oh, Darren, it's just a fan that's not working. And I would say to you, oh, it's just the steak. Oh, it's just food poisoning. Um, oh, it's just your ice not melting or ice melting. So ventilation is really, really key. And I'll say it again, a lot of times I go on service calls and I find that there's a problem with the how the refrigerator was installed. And that's why I really wanted to make a, take a moment, or maybe longer than a moment, and really stress how important that baffling was if your refrigerator's in a slide room. Um, and not all manufacturers are doing them correctly. I'm not gonna name names, but um, I have seen brand new RVs that it, it's just a wide open highway right here and I get called in because of the refrigerator not working. So let's move on to thermistors. Now on this particular board, the thermistor is gonna be this, this pin here. Okay, let me unplug him. Okay, so here we have um, this, the, this, this two wire connector. Okay, let me, just a two wire connector here. And um, again, a thermistor is a resistor that changes value based on temperature. So in order to see what the value is on this, we're gonna need a meter, okay? so. I'm gonna use my meter, I'm gonna go to ohms, because ohms is gonna give us a, a resistance value. And do we ever go in on the front? Only if we absolutely have to, but if we can, let's go in on the back, okay? Uh, that way we don't hurt the pins. Now, I have a value right here. Now, I'll take you inside and I'll show you. What I've done about 10 minutes ago is I took a coffee cup, put some ice cubes in it and filled it with water. And I took the thermistor off and I'm gonna take you inside and show you this. And I have the thermistor sitting inside that coffee cup with a food thermometer. And we're gonna go read what that th food thermometer says the water temperature is. And then we're gonna come out here and see what this 
there's a K right there, right? That's 8,290 ohms of resistance on this thermistor right here. So let's go inside. We'll look inside the refrigerator and let's look at what the food thermometer says that the temperature is and then we'll compare it with this, all right? Okay, we've come into the refrigerator and here you see I have a, a coffee cup with some ice. The thermistor is normally located on the fin right here and you see a little little blue dot, that would be like a, a sweet spot for it, okay? And these are the fins, okay? Um, remind me to tell you about the defrosting cycle. So here we have a cup, a cup full of ice, and let's just see what this food thermometer is gonna tell us the temperature is, because he's been sitting in here for like I said, okay, so 32, 33 degrees, okay? 30, 33 degrees. So we have in here a 33 degree the tip of that thermistor is at 33 degrees. Okay, so let's see what our ohms value is on the thermistor. Okay, so in there we had, what did I, 33 degrees. Here I have 8,400 ohms, because there's a K, 8,400 ohms connected to the back of the resistor. So here I have a sheet, printed it right out of the, um, actually on my website, I mentioned it before. Uh, this is the, therm the refrigerator thermostat R value sheet. Um, right off of my so myrvworks.com um, resource tab um, uh, manual library refrigerator dometic and then the refrigerator thermistor r value so 30 let's do it this way let's take 8000 let's take 8330 okay so we're gonna go okay so here we have let me see if i can 8000 what is it 8300 8, so 8000 here's 8300 right there Close enough. I mean, come on, just give me a, give me a, a plus or minus here, if you will. So 8,300, we're going to go across here. We're in the United States, so we're going to use Fahrenheit at 36 degrees. 36 degrees Fahrenheit. So that just proved that our thermistor is pretty good. Um, so did you see how that worked? Now, if I were to take that thermistor and put a hair dryer on it or something like that, then we're going to go over here. Let's see, here's 40 degrees. I'm going to have our Fahrenheit at let's say 90 degrees my resistor is going to give me 2000 ohms and at minus i don't know let's pick one minus 20 it's going to give me or minus fahrenheit minus four i think i'm in canada eh? uh at minus four it's going to be 28,000 ohms so so you see these numbers the resistance is going to change based on temperature so we've just proven that our thermistor is fine but hey your thermistor could have been bad um so we've talked about smelling seeing hearing we talked about the importance of leveling we talked about the installation we spent some time with my little beautiful drawing now we're troubleshooting components we now know how to test our thermistor with our value with our sheet we know where to get our sheet let's talk about the heating element next so now you say you're suspecting your heating elements bad well the heating element is this device up here okay i have a whole other video on troubleshooting the, the heating element and removing and installing the heat in, heating element. So if, if you are having issues, go into there. But I do want to touch upon it while I'm here, but I've got much more details on the other videos. We're going to need our meter again. Okay, we're going to grab our meter. Now, guess what? We're going to go to the manual again, right? This manual is going to show us the heating element now this is for the ac heating element there's another sheet for the dc heating element and we're going to come down here now this particular refrigerator is a 3862 so he's going to tell me i need a 325 watt at 120 volts i expect 44 ohms of resistance see ohms right here uh this refrigerator 44 ohms of resistance now take a look at this because 325, 325, 325, do here, 295, 295, 295, 325, 395, 195, 185. Notice that all these heating elements, some of them are same, some of them are same, sure. And those, the, the ones that are the same are the usually ones I stock. But um, in my service trailer, as I'm doing my rounds. But I just wanted to point out that, look at here, you got a 295 watt and a 95 watt, 195 watt. So don't assume that just because it looks the same, it's the right one. You gotta get the spec. Um, so AC heating element, find your model number, 325 watts. I expect it to get 44 ohms off of that heating element. Let's check. Set this up. Go look at our horseshoe. There's a terrible glare for you. Ah, I'm pushing buttons. Let's start that over again. Let's see here. There you go. Okay. And what are we going to do? We're going to go in the front or the back. Let's go in the back. Okay. We're going to plug him in. We're going to plug him in. 
right there. 42.2 ohms. You see that? So our heating element is good. But what if that number was different? What if somebody put a 195 watt heating element in there? Well, the resistance is going to be different. Um, so looking over here, see if I got 78 ohms or f well, some of these are the same. I think you make my. I think I'm making my point though. I have seen. Let me put it this way. Imagine a world where there are some shops that work on your refrigerator and they just want to get you down the road and they just throw a heating element in there and it's not the right one. So we just showed you how to test your heating element. Okay. Now, all of these things may or may not contribute to why your cooling unit is not working. Let's talk next about control boards. Okay, now we want to determine if the control board is good. Now what we're going to be doing is testing the communication between the upper board and the lower board. And we call the upper board the eyebrow board. Um, but it could also be called the upper board. I've kind of lately been calling it the upper board. It just seems to make more sense. Guess where I got this from? My website. Um, I don't remember what the file's called, but uh, if, if you need this sheet, um, you can find it online on my website or ask me, shoot me a comment and I'll figure out where I got it from. Um, I think it's the... Dometic Refrigerator Performance Sheet, if I'm not mistaken, off of my file system. So look here, five and six wire harnesses, okay? Now, not to be confused with the other sheet, which is the three wire display harness, okay? So we're gonna start with this one, okay? Da -da -da -da. We're gonna go there like that, okay? Um, what it's asking me to do is the harness unplug it, and I'm gonna just go through the motions here because um, I know everything's working. There we go. So let me get some slack out of this guy right here to pull him over to our, our classroom. There we go. So I've got some wires here. I've got one, two, three, four, five wires. And look, I've got red, orange, green, and black. Just like the color codes right there. Do I come in from the front? No, it's going from the back. So I'm going to test everything. I'm going to reference ground, and I'm going to test them all to ground because it says test communication. Um, Test harness by unplugging from P1 and checking continuity through each wire to chassis ground. Where are we going to reference that? This bolt down here where all the grounds are connected? That's what I'm going to reference. Why there, Darren? Because that's what the refrigerator thinks ground is. So let's use the refrigerator's ground. And so then I, if I was suspecting that there was a communication problem, then I would just follow the directions right here. And so let me just hold this up and you can kind of get a view of some of the steps that you need to do. Okay. Good. Now, if your refrigerator has the three wires, let me hold this one up there for you. There you go. And you can get an idea on what to do on this one. Okay. That would be how you would text the communication between the upper board and the lower board. Um, I can demonstrate it for you, or you can just read that and follow your own directions. Um, if you're watching this, I'm sure you're pretty technical savvy. So I'm going to plug that back in. And as soon as I did, I heard a click. So, um, and there it goes. So we're turning ourselves back on again. Well, hey folks, guess what we just did? I just walked you through some of the key highlights, some of the key pinnacles of what you would need to do if you suspect your refrigerator's not performing well. Spend a lot of time on my drawing here, but I really, that is so, so, so important. And more times than not, I, I come across that. And, and it's just like a, an added afterthought. It's like, oh, that's not that important, but it really, really is important to really pay attention to what I did here. That's why I kind of spent some time drawing my drawings there. We talked about the thermistor. We talked about the heating element. I'm going to be making more videos targeting and specifically on. There's nothing wrong with this refrigerator. Um, so this is a bit of a different video for me. Normally I bring you along on videos that I'm actually fixing something and it's the discovery and it's like the crime scene that we have to put it back together again. This one, I had some time and I really wanted to add value to you because I know we're going into camping season and it's important that your refrigerator is working well. So we talked about the sight, smell, and hearing. We talked talked about the importance of leveling and we talked about oh ventilation and heat sources and on all these types of things we drew our drawing we talked about the thermistor and how it works we talked about the heating element so man if this was important and it added value to you just give me a thumbs up that would be awesome you could subscribe to the channel if you like these types of videos and you want to learn more about your refrigerator just subscribe to the channel and every time we throw a new one out there you're going to get a little ding 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 or however it comes to you however you have it set up and um happy camper say my rv works Till next time, this is Darren signing off.